Yo, what up guys, it's Artifacts and today we're gonna do something cool. I'm gonna show you how you can create perfect wavetables out of samples that you've already got in your sample library using Serum. Let's get to it. So I've got Serum open right here. It's a blank Serum project. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the octave here down to minus two so that we get a nice bass range. I already recorded this video once but I screwed up. I forgot to root the audio and somehow it only recorded my voice and not the audio from Ableton. So here I am doing it again. I've got a sample right here and this sample is from a random sample library. This time I'm not gonna tell you what the sample library is and that is with a particular reason. I don't want you guys to do exactly the same as what I'm doing in this video. So I don't want you guys to pick the exact same sample because I don't think you learn too much from that. Um, you're just replicating what I do and I don't think that's the best way to learn. What I think is you should, you should try to apply what I'm telling you right now in this video to your own sample library because that way you will learn a lot more about it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this sample into a really cool wavetable. So I'm gonna open up the wavetable editor first by clicking this little pencil icon that will bring up this window. Now this sample is made in the key of F. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna type in F0 and I'm gonna hit enter. So what that is telling me is it's going to split this sound in frames of 110 samples. Now if you're not familiar with what samples mean in terms of an audio file, when you open up an audio file in an audio editor and zoom in pretty much all the way, you will see that the waveform is made up out of really small dots that are connected to each other. And that creates the waveform. Each one of those dots is actually a sample. So don't confuse that with samples that you have in your sample library. Those are two completely different things. So this particular loop or a sample or a bass loop or however you want to call it is made up out of a whole bunch of samples. So this is probably made up out of maybe 10 thousands of samples. Now it's going to split this at a thousand and a thousand and ten samples for each single frame of this wavetable. So let's drag in this sound. Now it has actually split this up. And when you do this, there might be a few things that happen. Let me go and switch to frame number 16. When you import a sound and you are pretty much spot on in terms of pitch, when you move back and forth between two frames, you shouldn't see the waveform drifting backwards or forwards. Now, right now, as you can see, when I move between these frames, it's not really drifting back and forth, it's just actually, well, it's changing the harmonics in the waveform, but we're not seeing any kind of phase movement going forwards or backwards. Now, to demonstrate what that would look like is if I'm gonna switch this to a thousand samples, so that's not the right spot on pitch, and now drag this sound in. If we go back to that same frame, so let's say frame 16, let's move to 15 and to 14 and 13. You can see that the waveform is drifting forwards now. See, it's kind of like drifting forwards. When I uh, set this to, let's say, 1,020 samples, and now drag the sound in, if we now um, do the same thing right here, you can see that the waveform is now shifting backwards. So that means that when you import a sound, and you look at the different tables that it has created and you can see either the sound shifting forwards or backwards that means that you got to change the sample size that is right here in this window so when the waveform is shifting backwards when you move the wavetable position knob forwards that means that you've got to decrease your sample size so right now if i move the wavetable position forwards I can see that the waveform is shifting backwards. So that means I gotta decrease this amount of samples. So it's currently set to 1020. If I set that to 1010, 
then drag the sound in and let's switch to one of these frames and do that you can see we're not getting any shifting back and forth anymore it's slightly going backwards and then forwards but that's normal that's nothing to worry about um, it just means that we're not getting uh, forwards or backwards motion across the entire wavetable so doing that we've now made sure that the pitch is right now what we need to do is we need to worry about making this into a perfect wavetable if I play this right now um, I've got a F note in here it's a oh it's an E2 note so I brought the pitch down of that oscillator to minus 2 so that will may mean that it's actually going to be in the bass range now um, and what I want to do is I want to open up the wavetable editor and first what I'm going to do is I'm going to look what happens here when I play this um, let's create an LFO shape that's going upwards like that set that to one bar and set it to envelope and I'm gonna connect that to the wavetable position so let's play this and see or hear what happens so it sounds good but there are some weird things going on at the start right at the start we get some weird stuff so I'm looking for the point where the waveform actually stops drifting so you can see from frame 1 to 7 it's actually doing some really weird things and then from 7 to 8 that's the last moment it's doing something weird and then from 8 to 9 it's actually it stopped drifting so that means that during these first seven frames there's most likely some kind of pitch bending going on or maybe a pitch envelope at the start of this bass sound so I select the first seven frames then go to add remove remove multi selection so now we start off really solid like that now we still get some weird stuff at the end first of all we have a whole bunch of blank frames that I don't need so I'm just gonna delete all of those we still get a little bit of weird stuff at the end let's look for where that stuff happens um, let's see so we have the waveform right here which is looking good not much drift going on still looking pretty good so from this frame to the next frame it's making this really big jump let's delete everything after that jump let's just get rid of that and let's see how this sounds so we still get a weird thing going on it's going back and forth somehow let's see where that happens I think it's right there so let's remove these frames as well so now I have 32 frames and it's looking like a good wave wavetable so now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this wavetable is going to be perfect so what a lot of people will do is they will drag in the sound and then use the more future after that to make it into a wavetable that's cool we're gonna do that as well but before we're gonna do the morphing we gotta do a little bit of work to this to make it perfect when you create wavetables uh, my own experience at least is to minimize the to minimize any pitch differences in the sound you want to make sure that your zero crossing points are perfectly spot on so right now if we look at the first frame we can see that this zero crossing point is kind of like off it's not right here at the side of the table it's slightly off it's it's here which is not what I want then when we look at the other side you can see it's slightly above the zero crossing line so that's also gonna mean it's not perfect a lot of people use the X fade edges options so you have two grid size and 16 samples what that's gonna do it's going to look at the left side of the table and the right side and it's going to cross fade those to each other so it's gonna be a perfect loop that's fine but you're still not getting perfect zero crossing points so what I do is I first bring my grid size up to something high let's say 32 like that and now I'm gonna to go to process and the first thing I'll do is I'll remove the DC offset so if there's any um, kind of DC offset which means basically means that it's off-center 
that's what DC means. So it's not perfectly centered around the zero crossing line. When there's any difference like that, doing the remove DC offset will actually take that out. So now we've done that, I'm going to use the fade edges grid size. This is actually going to make sure that it's going to fade every single frame towards the all the way at the left and all the way at the right side. It's going to fade that towards the zero crossing line. So now I actually have a zero crossing point right here at the left and right here at the right. And if I move through the wavetable, you can see that every frame has now a perfect zero crossing point. So now we've actually done all the preparation and we can actually morph this. So now I'm going to use the morph and I'll use the spectral morph. And when I now play this, we've got a perfect wavetable. So that's basically it. I can now save this. I think I've already saved this as hollow soul. Yeah, it's right there. Um, I can pretty much open up that one and I should pretty much sound the same. See? So that's it for this video. That's how you create really cool wavetables with Serum. If you want to see more like this, comment, like and subscribe. That will help me to grow this channel. I want to bring this channel up to at least 50,000 subscribers in, well, maybe the next couple of months. Now, just something else before I stop this video. Loop Masters has released my first ever vocal sample pack. There are a lot of sample packs out there aimed at these short vocal phrases that you can use in front of a drop or that you can use during a drop or maybe chop up to use them in a build up. There's quite a few packs aimed at that. But the biggest downside of these packs is, in my opinion at least, that when you get a pack like that, there's maybe 200 vocal samples in there and when you check the pack it ends up that only 5% of the vocals are usable and are actually good. 95% of all those samples most of the time don't really sound too well and in my opinion are not something that I would use. So I spent a lot of time on making this pack and I wanted to make a pack that is not only much bigger than all of these packs out there but also contains well pretty much only samples that I think are good. So I recorded a lot of vocal samples over the time of maybe two months and then I went in and I selected the best ones. I did that for two months and I ended up with a sample pack that contains more than 2000 vocal samples. So if you want to have some one shot samples or phrases or anything like that it comes with one shot vocal samples it comes with short phrases that are basically recorded at three different bpm values at 100 bpm 140 bpm and 174 bpm so that's actually going to help you to create well vocals for a lot of tracks it also contains one shot vocals that will help you to connect the different phrases together into longer sentences it also contains um, countdown vocals so like 10 9 8 7 6 stuff like that and it contains a whole bunch of processed loops that will show you how you can use these vocals and make them into something that you would use in a track if you want to check out this vocal pack check out the product page on the loop masters website I'll put a link in the description below this video and I'll maybe put an annotation in the screen check it out and let me know what you think about it if you buy that pack you're actually directly supporting my channel because I actually make a little bit of money on each one of the sales that's it for this video I hope you like it and I'll see you back soon peace